Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So, when will Apple release its first foldable phone, or flip phone, we'll say? And actually, should they be doing this? Well, that's a good question. I figured I'd just hold this up as a prop. This is my 12 mini. Anyways, um, yeah, I've looked into the, the foldable phones that are out on the market. I've watched a number of different YouTubers. Um, and one of them that I watched went out and bought all the different versions that are available. And uh, there's some common things to know. Well, common things you're going to find uh, about these things. One of which is whether it's a design like a regular phone that stands up normal or if it's a fold out kind of thing that kind of looks like you got an ipad mini stuck in your head um the common thing is that center line whether it's vertical for opening this way like a book or if it's the other way you're going to have a horizontal line and it's indented now this is going to make things for those of you who like to play games on your phone a real pain in the keister because in whichever mode you're going to have a distortion of your game because of that fold that's in there other things that i've noticed because i've actually gone out to the different kiosks in the mall i've looked at these foldable phones myself and one of the things i've noticed is the offsetness of contrast and brightness is affected in that area it's not balanced like the rest of the screen would be top and bottom away from the fold uh, so that's going to be another thing that, although it's minimal, it is there. And for me, I notice it and it would drive me absolutely insane. Anybody who would not really care, um, isn't going to really notice. Or maybe if you're got some issues with your eyesight, perhaps where you're not really going to notice it. Well, Hey, good for you. Um, now I definitely wear glasses, but whether I'm wearing glasses or not, visually with colorations, brightness, contrast, I don't have that issue. Okay. So I, I can pick this stuff out rather fast and easy. And that is one thing I noticed, um, in there. The other thing of course is what was mentioned was, you know, that little divot from the fold, right? That's definitely there. Um, and because these screens are also not glass anymore, they're another material, some sort of a polymer composite of some sort, um, it makes the screen itself, even in the main area, a little on the flexi side on, on a number of these models I've looked at. I've noticed some have less than others, but some have more than others. So, you know, when you push on the screen on your, on your iPhone, you know, this is a solid piece of glass here and it's not moving around on you where you can kind of run your finger like this and it almost feels like little waves are forming down the screen. Um, there's a few of those that I had noticed that were quite apparent and others not so bad because a little bit stiffer material. But there are definitely going to be other downsides to this. And, um, you know, and that's our folding example here. So this is, this is like a plastic of some sort and that Apple uses for putting their stickers on. Like many companies, they have different little material. But this is our crease. Now that crease is where it's gonna be at your folding point. Now it could be that way or it could be vertical, okay? Either way, you're gonna have that crease in there. But what happens is when you keep folding it in, folding it out, folding it in, folding it out, over time what happens to non-rigid material is it's tends to eventually build a white line okay and that white line is the material continually stretching you can even do this with metal you can take a solid piece of metal and start bending it and you'll see a discoloration happening at that that bend area and eventually what happens is that piece of metal is just gonna snap right apart okay and in jagged edging in the case of the polymer composites that are being used here um, it could be a little bit of a jagged or it could be depending on how bad the arc is on the fold, like how, how much, you know, like this straight it is, um, is going to depend on how clean that cut is going to be when it eventually cuts itself apart, which is inevitable. It is going to happen. It is physics. It is the laws of the universe that we cannot escape that when you continually bend something enough times, it's going to do this. It's going to break apart. 
right? It's no different. This is like a, a type of plastic uh, for, for the case. And this is an ESR case, but it doesn't matter. Lots of clear cases. And if you keep bending and flexing this, it's going to break. Now, the back is stronger than what the sides are. The sides are more flexible than the back is. So what's going to give first? The back end right at the bend, right? So these sides are going to be the last to go because they're a lot more pliable. So the longer that we want these screens to last, the more pliable they have to be in the material. But that makes for a completely odd, weird user experience when you're pushing on different parts of the screen because the entire screen has to be more pliable. They can't just make that little section the, the very like extremely pliable section and the rest of it rigid. It just doesn't work that way. So I see this as something as a problem. Now, I know that manufacturers do a lot of um, tests, of course, and they're gonna do a folding test on X amount of numbers of models. Okay, but as we know, also everything is not created equally. No two, uh, anything are alike. Okay, it's kind of like Confucius say, you come not step on the same piece of water twice. And literally, you can't. It's impossible, right? So it's impossible for us to actually clone anything uh, in materials 100%. It's kind of like why if you look at guitars, right? No two guitars are exactly and precisely the same. They can sound very much identical and almost unnoticeable by the human ear, okay? But an oscilloscope would actually show the difference, okay? Uh, from one to the next, right? And, you know, the only company in the world that has near-perfect cloning technology where it's almost undistinguishable by the human ear uh, in their guitars and for the feel, for, the, for every aspect of that guitar, the only company that's been able to pull that off so far has been Taylor, okay? Which also means that when it comes to resale value, they go down the tubes pretty quick because it's just a copycat of a copycat of a copy. There is nothing unique about any of their acoustic guitars. So if you played on a 110, you've played every single one of them. If you've played on a 200 series, a 900 series, you've played on every single one of them by just playing one because they're all going to be identical and so much so that over 99% of the musicians out there in the world cannot tell the difference. And this is the same sort of thing where we don't know where the cloning technology is in creating polymers with these phones for their screens. What company actually does have the best uh, capability of redoing this technology for every single screen, okay? But we do know that some are definitely weaker than others to the touch. Um, I felt some of the phones, it was a Samsung one, I think it was, I tr tried out and I just touch it and it's like, it feels like little waves going down with my fingers and I'm, I'm just very gently pushing on the screen. But every single one of them, right at that crease, some of them had a, a steeper arc, some of them were finer arced to, to that bending point, right? So here we got some information, I'm just on my PC here on the side. And they're gonna probably call this thing the iPhone flip, or there was uh, another name suggested uh, that they may do this called the iPhone fold. Uh, who knows, right? But we already have uh, phones like the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5, the, the Galaxy Z Fold 5, the Google Pixel Fold, the Motorola Razr Plus, and of course, the, uh, and an upcoming OnePlus Open, whatever. Um, but they're expecting that Apple, if they do come out with one anytime soon, it should be around 2024. Um, and there's a little mock-up design of what it could possibly look like. Um, now, I, I would think that, I mean, if Apple wants to win more Android users that love this design and they want to win them over to the Apple Eco, um, then, yeah, I mean, that would be a good move for Apple. But <clears throat> what's that add up to? A couple of thousand people? I mean, there's not one million people probably using a fit flowed styled phone. But who knows? I have no idea. You know, but this is also a weird time period um, in, in this century because, you know, ever since Y2K hit, things have gone very weird and strange with technology and 
Um, I guess you could call it some of the fetishes people are into when it comes to tech. You know, I mean, I, I love technology. I, I'm a technology nut and I always have been. And yet, you know, I'm from the days of, you know, I was born in the really late 60s, you know. So I've been right there from, you know, the 70s right on up and, you know, with computers, with phones, with everything tech, you know, stereo equipment, you name it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I don't consider myself to be a particular fanboy or anything, but I do love my Apple computers and Apple technology uh, far more than I do the Android side of the world, okay? Um, but even I can see plainly enough that even though the manufacturers may test open, close, open, close, open, close, they know how many open and closes it's going to take before screen failure happens, whether it's something with the digitizer or, you know, it's some other electronic issue that's going to arise or the actual snapping point of that, that screen where it's going to literally break apart physically in that, in that concave. So they're, you know, also done, I'm sure, a lot of prototyping where maybe we should have, you know, not so much of this curve here. Maybe we should make it a little wider so that it's more better. And, you know, some companies probably followed suit with that. Others thought, you know, we want it tighter, you know, and we don't want too much of a gap in there. We want it to get sit flatter, you know, and, and all this. And we see that there's different flatnesses and different curve ratios to all these different folding devices that we currently have. And so if Apple does actually go through with this, I hope they actually get it right the first time and it becomes a phone that will actually outlive and outperform anything on the Android market, okay? They're gonna need that in order for this thing to succeed. And to be honest, I am not holding my breath. I do not see it being that popular uh, in the sense of because it folds. I would say it will definitely gain some popularity and very rapidly only because it's something of a new design. I mean, look at the iPhone 12, okay? Now, I've got a 12 Pro and a 12 Mini. Uh, but this is my Mini, and I love the, the, the new design because it's actually an old design to a certain point. Right. And I and I really love this design. I think that was the probably the smartest move Apple made was going into this sort of thing. Same as their iPads, you know, going from rounded stuff to it's got the same sort of thing here. It's very squared off. It's got rounded edges. You know, I love my iPad Pro. Right. And so, you know, it also allows for that thickness to also carry a thicker, more higher amperage battery if required, um, that would be a benefit to a slightly thicker phone. And this really isn't all that thick, okay? But it's enough that it's comfortable in the hand and you know you're actually holding a piece of quality gear in your hand too at the same time. But it does have a lot of benefits and it was a new design change from an old design that they made better, okay? So they actually improved upon old design. Okay, and we get newer tech. So yeah, Apple needs to change because, you know, when you look at the 13, the 14, you know, they're very similar in design, right? So it's kind of like, well, what are we getting? Just maybe a little bit more guts or maybe it's the same guts with a better display maybe. And that means with a better display, maybe we have a slightly different processor or we have the same processor, but with a few more GPU cores or CPU cores. Something is going to have to be a little different right in order to justify that extra expense it's like when i went to my pro the biggest benefit is actually the cameras are the biggest benefit to the iphone 12 pro over the 12 mini right and of course the lidar sensor that we also get in the pro that was a big upgrade and there's a couple other smaller things that make it better but otherwise they do share the exact same uh processor chip okay um, same processor, same GPU, same amount of RAM, you know, um, storage capabilities, right, are there as well. Um, so, I mean, we, we, we need to look at all these things. But I think that on one hand, yes, Apple will eventually do this. I don't know if it'll be 2024. Uh, there is speculations that it may not even arrive until 2025. It'll probably be announced in 2024 and arrive 2025. 
Um, but I hope if they do do this, that they actually do it right the first time. Let me know what you guys think, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.